Welcome to the Midnight Quilt Show. Tonight, I'm getting an early start on my Thanksgiving dinner, and to pass the time in between, I'm working on an easy quilt with a twist. Plus, I have a bonus video that'll show you a technique that you've been asking for. Here's a hint. Let's get to it. Let's get this quilt cooking, pun completely intended. The pattern I'm gonna work on today, does my hair look okay? Surely it does. The pattern we're gonna work on today is called Four Square by Monique Dillard. I'm using the Boundless Solids and these beautiful colors are really gonna show off my quilting, which I mean, come on, is what I enjoy. And then this pattern has a fun twist, which are quarter square triangles made out of the gray and white, which are gonna make a really complex looking sashing. Let's cut it up. I'm gonna carve up this fabric. I guess you don't really carve fabric, you carve turkey. Let's say I'm gonna dice it like a carrot. But basically I just need to cut some squares, some bigger squares and some littler squares. And it just so happens I have a six and a half inch ruler. They need to be six and a half inch strips. Okay, my four square pieces are cut, and now I'm gonna cut out the gray and the white to make my quarter square triangles. And I'm gonna cut these just like I cut the celery for the stuffing. I think I did put the stuffing in the... Okay, so these are gonna get cut four and a half inch squares, and then I'm gonna cut them diagonally to give me my triangles. And then, like a chef trading in his knife for a different one, I'm gonna trade this in for a smaller one to make my cutting even quicker. We should have like a knife block for rulers. You just put them in there and you can whip them out. I think that would be pretty fun. I'm gonna cut some gray squares now and then make my triangles. It smells weird. Hmm. Truth be told, this is actually my first time making Thanksgiving dinner. I normally don't. I can't help it that I'm almost 40 and that my, both my mom and my mother-in-law like making Thanksgiving dinner. But this time I decide it's time to be an adult. I'm gonna try it. Just hope it doesn't, you know, turn out poorly. And to make my trimming easier, I'm gonna grab my rotating mat to slice it up nice and quick. And all I have to do is cut this diagonally both ways. And I have a few stacked up. I don't wanna do too many at a time because I don't want it to move on me, but I don't wanna cut every single one out. I'm gonna rotate it and then cut again. And hey, just random fact of worthless information, you cannot cut vegetables on this. You can use it as a Lazy Susan, which I'm thinking that would be kind of nice in the middle of the Thanksgiving dinner. Put the salt and pepper stuff on here. I need some white ones as well. And I'm gonna use these to make the quarter square triangles, which are gonna make a really interesting sashing for my quilt. I feel like I smell something. I wonder if one of the kids is messing around up there. And my cutting is done. So easy. That's why I love this pattern. I really feel like I've got this down, this multitasking kind of thing. Price is averted. Turkey's okay. Sweet potatoes aren't. That's all right. Rolls are in the oven. Sorry, just trying to yeah, get back into the mindset of things. There was a lot of smoke. A lot of smoke, but it's fine. It's fine. Great. Um, yeah. So we're gonna work on the four patch, which is just a, a nice, um, oh, nice basic block. So I'm gonna sew these together. I'm gonna sew these two and then those two and then sew them all together. And you know what's great about this? It's gonna look exactly like it's supposed to look. I won't have to uninvite anybody to Thanksgiving dinner because this block is gonna be perfect. And what's great about this pattern is it's whatever I want it to look like. So if I wanna switch it around and have the pinks on one side or the orange on the other, it doesn't matter. I just need four big blocks sewn together. one block down, but before I move on to the rest, I'm gonna show you how to make the quarter square triangles that are gonna make up the sashing of our quilt. They're gonna look something like this. Short sides together. I don't wanna put the long sides together because then I'm gonna get a half square triangle, which is fantastic, but not what we need for this particular quilt. So short sides together, sew that quarter inch seam along the side.
I went ahead and chain stitched those. That meant I didn't break the thread in between. And what's nice about it is it keeps them together in groups of two. So when I'm ready to put them together, I don't have to trim it. I can just fold it right on itself and sew it together. And I really kind of love how it keeps them together so when I'm doing a bunch, I can already have them joined up exactly how they need to go. I wish I could claim credit for that trick, but I can't. Somebody very wise taught me that. Now I'm gonna sew along down the middle. And there is one beautiful quarter square triangle. Let's go ahead and make another one. And the second pair is done. Normally you could press this, but I'm just gonna give it a little finger press and I'm gonna put them in the opposite direction. That way when I sew them together, they'll nest nicely and that's what's gonna help give me that perfect point in the middle. So since they're going this way, you can tell that they're gonna give it a nice nested seam. It's kind of like turkey and stuffing going together, or rolls and butter, or smoke alarms and fire extinguishers. I mean, just off the top of my head. I have a bunch more left to do, but what I wanna do real quick is show you how I press them and trim them and get them all nice and ready. I have my little miniature iron and I'm gonna carefully press this. Anytime you're dealing with triangles, you might have some of your edges be a little stretchy, so I just wanna be very careful. Press it nice and flat. My turkey may not be as juicy as my mom's, but there will be some matching points in this quilt and that's good enough. <laughs> with these blocks, I need to trim them down to three and a half inches square. So I have my ruler, which is not quite the right size, but I use a little bit of washi tape to make it the right size. And this diagonal line right here is perfect because I can line it up with my seam and that will help make sure I don't get a, a wonky quarter square triangle. Um, although that could be a cool idea, I like it. So I'm just gonna trim this carefully on one side and then the other. It's definitely where this rotating mat comes in handy. Probably putting too much worry into this, but I want it to be perfect. Result is a nice three and a half inch square quarter square triangle. And I'm gonna do the same on the other one. Hold on, got a little bit of stuff. A little hot in here. And I even made a few flying geese, and I didn't show you how that comes together, but I have an episode of the Midnight Quilt Show where I did the wallflower quilt, and you can see exactly how those come together, so check that out. And I'm just sitting here feeling pretty proud of myself. Martha Stewart ain't got nothing on me. Well, now I'm gonna put this together and make the sashing strips of my block. So I have to admit, there's something fun about the idea of a really simple block and a more complex sashing. It kind of flips the script a little bit. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take my four quarter square triangles, and that's actually gonna be the piecing in between those simple four patch blocks. Now sewing them together is easy. All I have to do is pull them together. I'm gonna to very carefully try to make sure that those grays are touching as much as possible and try to have an accurate quarter inch seam so that I don't have any of them off a little bit. And the same with the second set. And when I open them up, you can see I'm starting to get that square where it comes together. It's gonna to give it a checkerboard kind of look. And then I'm just gonna sew those two units together. And there I have the strip that's gonna go in between my blocks but I need to press it before I do anything else with it. I have a lot of fabric coming together at these points, and what I wanna do is be very careful during the pressing, and I'm gonna press it open. That's gonna help ease some of the bulk at those points. Now, I know that when it comes to quilters, we have very strong opinions about which way we like to press. I know some of you will only press to the side, some of you only press open. Honestly, for myself, I'm just impressed if I press at all. But for this particular type of quilt, I really wanna ease all that bulk. It's gonna make the whole free motion quilting process easier. And even if you're not quilting your quilt, your long armor will definitely appreciate it. And there's one sashing down. I only have three more left and I'm finished with all the sashings in the quilt. It doesn't sound right. Hold on, let me, let me check. Let me consult the pattern. Oh. Never mind, I've got like 54 and a half more to do. And that means I need to get sewing. Okay, so, wow, I've been super productive. I have finished my sashing pieces, I've flipped the turkey, I've averted another crisis in the kitchen, I have even have a couple rows sewed together, so I wanna show you where we're at right now. I have my sashing pieces in between my blocks. This is looking so cool. And then you can tell I have the sashing strips on either side as well. So it's like sashing, sashing, sashing. And what's fun is I'm gonna get these corner stones right here that's gonna make that pop of color come out. Well, this quilt ain't gonna sew itself, so I better get these rows together.
The center of this quilt is finished. All I have to do is add those borders. And they're gonna be the same beautiful gray as these squares. Just wide enough that I'll be able to put something fun with the quilting designs in there. Gray on the sides as well. So all I have to do is put on the borders, refill my drink, base this quilt, base the turkey, and I'll get this thing finished. Well, obviously I'm ready to start quilting. I have my quilt sandwich basted and ready to go. Now, I didn't show you in this video, but I did put together a free bonus video in which you can see me basting this quilt sandwich with tips on how you can baste your own quilts. And you can find out the information about that in the description box below. And hey, since you're already heading down that way, you might as well subscribe so that you don't miss any of this Midnight Quilt Show goodness. I'm ready to start quilting, and what I have in my head, which I think would be super fun, is here is the floor patch block that the quilt pattern has. Beautiful, nice and fun. A lot of room for the machine quilting, which we know I love. But what I thought would be great is to create these secondary patterns. So instead of quilting this block all the same, I'm actually gonna look to these four blocks and quilt them with the same design. I just think that will kind of give it a fun, different secondary pattern and it'll keep me amused while I'm waiting for my turkey to finish cooking, so there's that. I'm gonna look at this quilt as an opportunity to quilt a lot of different all-overs, just to kind of experiment. I think in these four squares, I'm gonna quilt the swirl hook meander, which is really one of my favorites. This particular design is gonna start with a swirl or a line that curls in on itself, but before I finish that swirl and move on to the next, I'm gonna add just a little hook to it and echo back, and then echo around and finish my swirl. And when I'm ready to do my next one, I'm just gonna go right into my next swirl, add my hook, and continuing on. It sure is nice to get to the quilting part where I can just relax and let my brain go on autopilot. This is where I kind of reassure myself that even if the turkey doesn't turn out good, it's gonna be fine. My sister-in-law's bringing her green bean casserole, which is the best, and my 14-year-old son, Drake, actually can make a mean pumpkin roll. At the very least, we'll have green beans and pumpkin roll. Oh, and a quilted quilt. Now, I always say that 80% of quilting is just knowing where you're going. I mean, I completely made up that statistic, but it sounds like it could be true. And I know that I wanted to end up at this corner so that I can use the quilting to move on to the next one. In these gray triangles, I'm gonna do a continuous curve because, well, that's what I love to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just quilt that, and that's gonna help get me to my next area. And then I'm gonna continue quilting my swirl hook. Now while I'm quilting this swirl hook, I'm already thinking ahead to what other quilting designs I wanna use on this quilt. But you don't have to think so hard because I've put together some free quilting diagrams that you can download and see exactly how I'm gonna quilt this. And you can find out how to do that in the description box below. Be sure to check them out because I have two different versions, an up all night version, which takes just a little bit longer, or a turn in early for those of you that just wanna get the quilt quilted. Well, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Now the most important question of the night is, does this hat make my bottom look big? Just kidding. Thanks so much for joining me. I had so much fun working on the four patch quilt with that quarter square triangle sashing and quilting it was incredibly fun. I don't know if anybody else can see the secondary patterns, but I sure love them and I find them amusing. And don't forget, I have the free bonus video, so check that out for tips on basting your quilts for machine quilting. You can find out more about that in the description box below and be sure to subscribe because you never know what's gonna happen on the Midnight Quilt Show. And I'm finally finished. Time to sit back, relax, take a sip. Dang it!